All right, so in today's notes, we're looking at lesson four, but we're only gonna do this front page. So let's start at the top. He says, now that we have a good feeling of square roots. Now, if you don't have a good feeling, you really need to be reaching out to Mrs. Lorenzo or myself, okay? We need to do more square root practice. But now that he says, since we are comfortable, we can use them to help us solve typical types of quadratic equations. Those equations involving a squared quantity. Because we solve equations using inverse operations, and if we see a square, such as x squared, we can do or perform the inverse operation to get the x all by itself. Okay, so in exercise one, solve each of the following equations for all values of x. Now, we saw this in the other unit where I'm going to use the, actually I'll use a scrap sheet of paper. At the, or, I'm sorry, in the beginning of this unit, we talked about um, when I had the negative radical out front, so say the negative square root of 9, that would be a negative 3. If it didn't have the symbol square root of 9, they wanted positive 3. And if they wanted both roots, they would put that plus minus right um, above the plus above the minus. Plus minus square root of 9 means they want both the positive and negative roots. So it's going to be negative 3 and 3. You could also write that answer as both positive and negative 3. So when it's written that, that means it it's both the positive and negative answer of 3. Okay? We were told that if it didn't have the symbol, right, that we were just looking for that positive or principal square root. When you're solving equations and when we perform that inverse operation, so we perform an operation of taking the square root, is the inverse of squaring is the square root. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Okay, so when we're solving, you need to show both the positive and negative solution. So when we take the square root of x, or square root of x squared, the square root gets rid of the exponent of 2. So we have x equals, now remember, when we're solving, it wants both. So this would be 4 and negative 4. We have 2 answers. So x squared equals 100. We solve by taking the square root of both sides because that's the inverse of squaring. That gets rid of the power of 2 and x equals. Now instead of writing 10 and negative 10, I'm going to combine it with that symbol positive and negative 10. So it looks a little bit cleaner, but either way that's okay. Okay, you can write it like that or like this. And um, one other way to write it would be to say x equals 10 and x equals negative 10. You write it however you're most comfortable, okay? And the last one, x squared equals 20. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. The square is gone. We're left with x. Now, unlike the 16 and the 100, those two numbers are perfect squares, so we can take the square roots, or they're friendly radicals. 20 is not friendly, right? I can't take the square root of 20 and get a whole number. It's a decimal. There is no number that when I multiply by itself, I get 20. So, let's take a minute to write down our perfect squares at the top. So, 1 times 1, 1, 2 times 2, 4, 3 times 3, 9, 4 times 4, 16, 5 times 5, 25, 6 times 6, 36, 7 times 7, 49, 8 times 8, 64, 9 times 9, 81, and 100. Now, 20. 20 falls right here. Between 16 and 25. So, which one of these numbers, okay, you're going to check highest to lowest, goes into 20. That number is 4. 
So radical 4, radical 5. We break it up into two radicals with the perfect squared up front. And then x equals, now I'm going to use that plus or minus symbol. I like it a lot. It looks much cleaner. So i got to put it in, plus, minus, and then 2, radical 5. Okay? Those are really basic ones. Okay? So he says, so the key here is that the inverse operation to squaring is taking the square root. We knew that. But when you do this, you always introduce both a positive and negative answer. Yes. So when you actually take that inverse operation, which is involved with solving, we have to show that plus minus. So squaring is a non-reversible process, meaning that you can't simply undo it. So now let's add some additional operations. Recall that we always solve equations by undoing operations in the opposite order in which they have been done. And in terms of order of operations, exponents essentially come first, so they will be undone last. Okay? Because the order of operation, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So they come very early, as he's saying. So when we work backwards, we always undo addition and subtraction first, then multiplication and division, and undo the exponent last. So let's take a look at number... 2, move it up, solve each of the following equations for all values of x by using inverse operations. Okay, so let's take a look at a. So there's not much room, one, between each problem, so just write small, I guess. So number 2, letter a. So 2x squared plus 10 equals 28. So we work backwards and undo subtraction and addition first. So let's subtract 10. So we bring down the 2x squared. And 28 minus 10 is 18. Remember, we're undoing that square last. So now let's divide both sides by 2. We're undoing that multiplication with division. Bring down the x squared. And 18 divided by 2 is 9. So now I'm going to take that square root. And x equals, so let's put in that plus minus. And square root of 9 is 3. That wasn't so bad now, was it? All right, part B. We'll move left to right. So, we have subtraction. Let's undo that first by addition. Bring down that fraction, x squared over 2, and 3 plus 5 is 8. And we're going to do the opposite of dividing by 2, which is multiplying by 2. And we're left with x squared equals 16. So in, in making sense of the equations, when you get to that point, like x squared equals 9. x is some number. What number do you square to get 9? Well, you can square a negative 3 or a positive 3. So what number do we square to get 16? That's 4 or negative 4. So take the square root and x equals positive and negative 4. All right, last row. So now what they're doing is putting this in parentheses. So, unfortunately, or not unfortunately, they're just a little bit different in that here the exponent was just on the x. 2 times x squared. x squared divided by 2. Now it's that square of the subtraction of x and 2. So we're taking that difference and squaring it. We're taking a sum and squaring it. So it looks a little bit different. Okay? So here, because there's the 2 and the multiplication and then the minus 50 for subtraction, let's look at d first. Okay? So we always want to do the addition or subtraction first, so let's add 50. So 2 times x plus 5 squared. 150 plus 50 is 200. So now we're going to undo the multiplication. 
We can't distribute. Okay, so divide by 2 and we get x plus 5 squared equals 100. So now this and this look very similar. Okay, we've gotten that parenthesis by itself. So it's the square of the sum. So now in both problems, and we'll finish D first, we want to undo the square by taking the square root. Okay, so x plus 5 equals. We still want to include that plus and minus in this step. So this is plus or minus 10. The square root of 100 is 10. Now, okay, we're going to do the opposite of adding 5, which is subtracting 5. Okay, so x equals, now I can write this first, positive or negative 10, minus 5, but I like to move this up in front, so it becomes negative 5 plus or minus 10. Okay, so let's first do, okay, negative 5 plus 10, so negative 5 plus 10 is 5. And now let's do negative 5 minus 10. So this is how the two solutions are written. One is by taking a negative 5 and adding 10. The other one's taking negative 5 and subtracting 10. So we get negative 15. So I can write it, okay, x equals 5 and x equals negative 15. Okay. The next one, and last one, again we're at that stage in the pink so we want to take the square root first, and we have x minus 2 equals plus or minus 5, and then add the 2, so x equals, and like I said before, I like to slide that 2 in front, so it is 2 plus 5 and 2 minus 5. So 2 plus 5 is 7 and 2 minus 5 is negative 5. So you can write it out like this or you can put it in a solution set. So solutions are answers set more than one and I always like to put the negative number first so it doesn't look like a subtraction problem and you should have the symbol. Okay, but before we go Let's actually take and check some of these answers. So let's check the left side A and C. So I'm going to type um, the left side of the equation in the calculator with the positive 3 in and then with a the negative 3. So 2 parentheses, let's plug in the 3 squared plus 10, we get 28, good. Now 2 parentheses, let's substitute the negative 3 in there, squared plus 10. Good, works out. Now let's move down here. Let me clear that. I have to put my parentheses in first, put the x of negative 5 minus 2. Uh, I did something wrong. I'm like, because negative 5 minus 2 is a negative 7. It's right here. 2 minus 5 is a negative 3. And that's why checking is so important. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Um, negative 5. Let's type that back in. It's not a negative 5. No, it's a negative 3. So let's put a 3 over top. Negative 3 minus 2 squared. Now that's 25. Good. And then parentheses 7 minus 2 squared is 25. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to stop there and then on Wednesday we'll pick up on the back side of this uh, note page. And then after those notes uh, is a quiz. So at this point you should be going back and doing some studying. So today's Monday, and your quiz, your first quiz, is going to be on Friday. Please reach out to either one of us if you need help. Take care.